actually using the pepper spray. Police are aware of this theory. The water is three and a half thousand meters deep. The tax climbs up to 12 and a half percent. The window on our community. We bring you the best in U.S. television entertainment. And the greatest sporting events in the world. A brilliant performance of Duffy. We are the island's only Bermudian-owned broadcaster of both television and radio. With the only TV channels that are available over the air in beautiful high definition, completely free. We are always expanding. We are always innovating. And most important, we're always your station. This is Bermuda Broadcasting. You're watching Bermuda Tonight. It's Tuesday, October the 16th, 2018. I'm Diane Brewer, and thank you for joining us tonight. Kyrie Smith-Williams has been found guilty of the 2011 premeditated murder of Colford Ferguson. A Supreme Court jury also found the 27-year-old guilty of using a firearm to commit that offense. Mr. Ferguson was gunned down in broad daylight as he worked outside a residence on Mangrove Bay Road in Somerset. Smith-Williams had denied the two charges throughout the trial and claimed he did not know the victim. Troy Harris, a key Crown witness, told the jury that Smith-Williams had confessed to committing the murder by acting as the getaway rider, while another man, not before the court, Rashid Muhammad, was the gunman. It was also a case of mistaken identity. Justice Carla Greaves handing down an immediate sentence following the verdict, giving him a life imprisonment. He must spend a minimum of 35, behind, 35 years behind bars before being eligible for parole. In other news, the Bermuda Tourism Authority is set to reveal its much-anticipated tourism plan during the upcoming summit. Mike Sharp spoke with BTA Chairman Kevin Dallas to get some insight as to what the plan entails. The BTA will hold their tourism summit next week, Wednesday, and pull together plans to develop a comprehensive six-year national tourism plan. 20 to 25 percent of the plans are in the BTA's direct control, as was the case in the previous plan. The 2012 National Tourism Plan had many elements to it. Many of those elements were not directly related to or under the control of, of tourism. And the 2018 plan in, then is the same. During the summit at Hamilton Princess, one of the major topics in a breakout session will be how important is group travel as we become a year-round destination. The plan has many elements, but one of them definitely looks at the role of the role of year-round travel. So looking at outside of those peak summer months, what are the things that we can draw out to better define uh, Bermuda's seasons and give people reasons to travel within them? And one element, of course, is group travel and sports tourism, where I think you know we've been on a, a run of success. Uh, over the last couple of years, but where there's much more to do. Technological and physical infrastructure improvements are required. One of the elements that the plan looks at is what does, what does looking at Bermuda and looking at the Bermuda tourism product from a visitor's perspective look like? And one of the things that we know about uh, modern visitors is that they want what we've called a, a frictionless experience. So we've tried to take a look at from the time they first arrive at the airport until they leave longing to come back, what are all those moments where a visitor might experience friction in their whole experience and what can we do about that. So much work has gone into having a successful national plan, such as more than half a year's work, numerous interviews, and even more surveys. We spent eight months working on it. We have interviewed hundreds of people. We have surveyed thousands more. So this really is a plan that's brought together input from our visitors and our locals, from BTA supporters and detractors. And we've worked really hard to incorporate everyone's view into what we're now going to play back. So it's an exciting moment for us to be able to share the results of eight months of work. And I'm Mike Sharp with Bermuda Broadcasting News. 
Thanks, Mike. In other news, almost 90 percent of this country's homeless are male. Many seek refuge at the Salvation Army shelter, a facility which has already been described as fit to be condemned. But with the final decision still to be made on alternative facilities, the men who frequent the Parsons Road site will just have to hold on. Gary Moreno has that story. The 2016 census revealed there were some 138 homeless people in Bermuda, with the vast majority of them, 88 percent or 121, being male. Of the original figure of 138, just under half live on the streets of Hamilton, some engaging in activity as recently highlighted leading to prosecutions. It had been suggested the installation of benches around the city was proving an attraction for many of these individuals, and the argument was put forward the benches be removed, a notion quickly dispelled by Hamilton Mayor Charles Gosling, who was adamant the seating was meant for use by the community at large. Many of the city's homeless have mental and substance abuse issues which the Salvation Army has been expressing a desire to assist with. However, that effort has been hampered by the unavailability of proper facilities. A problem which could be alleviated somewhat through the much-talked-about creation of a new homeless shelter at the former Bishop Spencer building on Glebe Road in Pembroke. The property was first gifted to the Salvation Army in 2015 when it was suggested it would cost in the region of half a million dollars to renovate. But two years later, in an interview with Bermuda Broadcasting News, Major Frank Pittman, the then divisional head of the Army in Bermuda, indicated the cost of the renovation work would be in the region of $4 million. Government, through the Ministry of Social Development and Sport, had allocated $78 million for grants and contributions, 400000 of which, we understand, was given to the Salvation Army. Funding, which no doubt would go a long way in helping the Army move its helping programs from the current dilapidated facility on Parsons Road up the hill to Bishop Spencer. So just what is the delay? It is understood government has forwarded a memorandum of understanding to the local arm of the Salvation Army for review, and they in turn have sent it to the Army's Canada headquarters for their approval. We did reach out to Major Sandra Stokes, the current head of the Army, locally for comment on the status of the MOU, but were told she was not in office. However, she would speak with us at a later date. Michael Weeks, the Minister of Social Development and Sport, was in meetings when we tried to contact him for comment, although he did indicate he will be willing to speak with us in due course. It has been proposed that once it comes online, the new facility will provide counselling as well as other services to not only clients but also the wider community. The provision of transitional housing is also thought to be a possibility. Gary Moreno, reporting for the Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thanks, Gary. We'll have more of you after this short break, including all the latest weather news. Stay with us. You can count on us. Save a dollar ten on Purdue Fresh Chicken Leg Quarters, only $1.79 per pound. Pretty Lady Red, White, and Black Seedless Crepes, just $3.99 per pound. Charmony Essentials, Ultra Soft or Strong Toilet Tissue, just $2.99 for a four-row pack. Dettol Surface and Power Kitchen Cleaner, only $3.99 for a 750-milliliter bottle. Save 90 cents on Bounty select size white paper towel, only $2.09 for one roll. Visit our website at www.marketplace.pf for more weekly specials. You can count on us. Shopping online? The cheapest and easiest way to bring your packages to Bermuda is with U.S. Express at Mailboxes. I've been a U.S. Express customer for a long, long time, and I stay a customer because it's fast, easy, and convenient. You get the automatic call when, they, um, when your package is here, and then and just the pickup is easy. The street's not too crazy there, but you can just swing by, boom, down the steps, get your package, and off you go. Sign up for a U.S. Express account at www.mailboxesunlimited.com today. Win a trip or two to the 2019 Trinidad Carnival. When you purchase a car from Bermuda Motors, your name will be entered into a draw for a chance to win an all-expenses-paid trip for two, including flights, accommodation, and tickets to the Trinidad Carnival. Visit Bermuda Motors on Church Street or bermudamotors.bm. Welcome back. Deputy Opposition Leader Leah Scott is confident that gaming will not take off in Bermuda because the banks are not on board. She says the publishing of the first phase of regulations took people by surprise.
I'm happy that the regulations or the first tranche of the regulations have come out. I understand from the minister who I spoke with yesterday that they're coming out in two tranches and the second tranche will be out shortly. And the regulations were published by way of depositive regulations for view in the gaming office. And so the only thing that was published in the um, newspaper, I think, was a statutory instrument to inform the public. So I think the publishing of the reg regulations took a lot of people by surprise because nobody, I certainly wasn't aware that they had been published. And I'm glad that they are there, so it just continues to um, fill in the legal framework for gaming. But what concerns me is that we're now some 14 months into uh, Richard Schutz resigning. We still don't have a uh, person that's willing to come forward to be an executive director. The position's been advertised, and we still can't get anybody. And I think part of the challenge is that there were amendments to the Gaming Act that kind of essentially allow the minister to have some sort of interference with the Gaming Commission, which was, as you know, set up to be an independent body. So the concern is that we now have a non-independent commission. We don't have anybody that's willing to come and, and be the executive director of the Gaming Commission. And, you know, the government promised job and training opportunities that are now not available. And I actually don't think the gaming is going to be able to take off in Bermuda. And I'm sorry, just to go back, compounded is the fact that none of the banks seem to be prepared to, to process the proceeds of gaming because of challenges with correspondent banks. BTA CEO Kevin Dallas said gaming is low on priority of decision making for a visitor to Bermuda. The opportunity that, that gaming represents for Bermuda, I think, is important to, to put into context. So as we have thought about it, we believe that gaming represents another amenity. It, it's something that our visitors uh, might do while they're here. It's a reason that they might stay another day. Uh, we don't see gaming as, by itself, transformative for the, for the tourism economy or the visitor experience. So I think our, our expectations of what gaming could deliver for Bermuda and what you'll see in the National Tourism Plan is a, is a measured and, I think, reasonable ambition given where we are today in 2018. In health news, heavy metal toxicity in people is rare but not unheard of, as is the case with one woman we spoke to who's moving to inspire others to be more aware of the dangers of poisoning from mercury, lead, and other heavy metals often found in cosmetics and fish. Jasmine Patterson has that story. Annalise switched to a pescatarian diet almost a decade ago, eating fish daily for a period of about four years. In 2011, while Anne was completing her master's degree in the UK, she gradually became ill and unable to function. My diet had changed drastically and I kind of included fish and um, that is also another source. Um, also cosmetics and um, as I said, it's generally in the atmosphere, but I believe that my system, like I was under lots of stress then from studying and so on, it was, you know, just life in general and mainly through my studies and my detox pathways were blocked. The most common cause of mercury poisoning is from consuming too much methylmercury, which is linked to eating seafood or larger fish, like swordfish and tuna. As a result, she said the mercury accumulated in her system over time. I did the hair test, and I did it in a lab in the States, as well as in a lab in New Zealand, and they all proved that my levels were like way off the chart. Experts say small amounts of the metal are naturally occurring in the environment and are present in everyday foods and products that do not overall affect health. In fact, she believes there are many people living with heavy metal toxicity that may not know it. Adults suffering with advanced mercury poisoning may have problems with hearing and speech, loss of coordination, vision impairment and nerve damage and even some neurological dysfunction. When I did start to do my research, I joined some Facebook groups and I was like blown away that there's so many people there who are suffering from mercury toxicity. I even knew some people who killed themselves because they couldn't deal with the symptoms anymore. They, they were not just getting better. It's a, and it also affects your mind too. It affects, I mean, your eyesight, your everything. There is no cure for mercury poisoning. The standard treatment is by taking chelating agents, which are drugs that work to eliminate the toxins from the body. However, Anne has opted for a more natural solution. I'm still dealing with it. It's still in my system because I'm going the natural route and it takes like a very, very long time. So you have to look at your diet. You have to be careful what clothes you're wearing, your cosmetics, any products that all you're using. Um, as I said, it's even in 
the water, because you have to be careful of the type of water you're drinking, like in terms of having your water filtered, your foods as well. Um, it's it's an epidemic, in my opinion. Poisoning can also disrupt fetal and early childhood development, which is why doctors advise women who are pregnant to avoid eating fish containing high amounts of mercury. Anne is currently writing a book on detoxing from heavy metal poisoning the natural way, in hopes of inspiring others to take control of their diagnosis. Jasmine Patterson reporting for Bermuda Broadcasting News. Some good information. Thank you, Jasmine. Well, turning to weather news, an absolutely gorgeous day today with lower humidity. As we can see from our tower cam, a beautiful calm evening as well. Let's go to AccuWeather headquarters to see if any rain's moving our way. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. This AccuWeather forecast here on ZBM is brought to us by our friends at the BFNM Insurance Group. We have some uh, pretty active weather headed our way in another day or so, but we're in pretty good shape right now. There's a front on the map that's going to bring some changes to the area. But for right now, we have very light winds and life is pretty good for us. We have some quiet weather. High pressure is overhead. Still no real rain anywhere nearby. You can see some flickers of uh, shower action hundreds of miles to our east earlier in the loop and then to our north as this next front gets a little closer. So we're at 77 degrees, humidity around 60 to 65 percent. Light, light winds, light and variable really. If anything, uh, at times it's been blowing from the south at around five knots in recent hours, but even that is fading. Water temp is uh, back up about a fraction of a degree, rounds up to 80 right now. On the inside, we have nearly one foot waves at times, even calmer and flatter than that. Waves on the outside, two to four feet. So we are in good shape for a nice, pleasant evening. Mainly clear, we'll drop down to 72. We're looking forward to the big drop in temperature uh, as uh, a pair of fronts will be approaching over the next five days or so. So it'll be feeling a little cooler by this time and uh, at least by this time next week and early next week as well. Uh, light, uh, low tide is coming at 927 tonight. High tide then at 311 a.m. Uh, for uh, most of us during the waking hours. The next low tide at 936 may play a role in some of your plans for your Wednesday and then high tide at 341 p.m. Uh, as we move on through the middle of the week. So sunshine and some clouds still dry tomorrow. It will get breezier, though, in the second half of the day as we await the arrival of this next front, and then we will uh, see some rain roll in. So showers and storms are occurring into Jamaica, to Barbados, and Trinidad as well, uh, just to pop up convection. There is a weak, disorganized tropical wave that has impaled itself into Guatemala with some extra showers there. It uh, never really got organized, just too much land interaction with northern Honduras, and that's a good thing. So that will not become a named storm, and there are no other real threats out there at this point. Into the uh, eastern part of North America, we're much cooler out there. Toronto, 47 with some showers. New York, 62 for the Wednesday forecast. Boston, 62. Atlanta down to 74. Big change there. Miami still holding on to the heat. That's the exception. And then to the east, we have London with some fall weather, 59 degrees. Our five-day forecast shows showers arriving on Thursday with a strong front. As that front pushes through, we'll notice a big change in temperature. We'll be down into the mid-70s Friday, mid-70s Saturday, back up to near 80 on Sunday. But then there's another front that will follow, and that will subtract even more from our temperatures. So by Tuesday of next week, we expect to be dealing with some low to mid-70s. Big changes are brewing. We're going to send it back to you guys. AccuWeather was presented by BFNM Insurance Group. It's hurricane season. Here are some tips from BFNM. Before a storm, make sure you have a family plan. Stock up on food and water and protect your home. Board up and make sure your insurance policies are up to date. After a storm, check everyone's safety, especially seniors. Inspect your property and secure from further damage. Then note the damages, list, and take photos. Remember, you can always count on BFNM 24-7 during hurricane season and all year round. Bassett, custom designs by you at Furniture Walk. So, how do you like it? Choose your arm style, then select your pieces.
special order exactly what you want, your style, your way. Sofa, loveseat, chair, sectional, you name it. Bassett, your style, your way, at Furniture Walk. Welcome back. The Bermuda Maritime Operations Center is coordinating two ship medical evacuations off Bermuda this evening. The U.S. bulk grain carrier Liberty Grace, en route from Galveston, Texas, bound for Malta in the Mediterranean, arrived off the east end from Bermuda to transfer a 67-year-old male crew member who has been suffering from unexplained dizziness. This transfer via the pilot and rescue boat St. David took place at 5 p.m. and the crewman was taken to the King Edward Hospital and the cruise ship Norwegian escaped is inbound to Bermuda tonight at approximately 9 p.m. for the medical evacuation of an 86-year-old female passenger suffering with a suspected broken pelvis. The patient will disembark also on the pilot and rescue boat St. David, accompanied by a ship's medical team to be taken to the King Edward Hospital. The vessel will then head back offshore and wait until Wednesday before taking pilot for her arrival to dockyard as scheduled at 4 p.m. In other news, Steve Banner has been appointed CEO of HSBC Bank of Bermuda Limited, subject to regulatory approvals. His appointment will take effect as of November 12, 2018. Mr. Banner will succeed Mark Watkinson, who will be retiring from the HSBC group after a 33-year career, having held a number of senior management positions across 10 countries. Chris Davies, CEO of HSBC International, thanked Mark Watkinson for successfully leading HSBC Bermuda for the past three years, leaving it significantly stronger and well-placed for growth. He added Steve Banner has been CEO of HSBC Greece for the past four years. Steve joined HSBC in 1991. He brings to the role a wealth of international banking experience acquired from roles in Asia, Europe, and North America. Still to come, World Basin will have all the latest sports news in just a few minutes. We'll be right back. Organic Gala, Fuji, Granny Smith Apples, and Bartlett Pierce. Only 99 cents each. Certified Angus Beef Top Round Steak, regular, thin, London, just $7.99 per pound. Select varieties of Arma Hammer 2X Laundry Detergent, only $9.99 for a 75-ounce bottle. Select varieties of Ocean Spray Cranberry Juice, $5.65 for a 64-ounce bottle. Top price on Friendly's Ice Cream, only $4.65 for a 48-ounce tub. Visit our website at www.marketplace.pm for more weekly specials. From the very beginning, it was always our singular focus to do whatever it takes, use every possible resource to fight cancer and never lose sight of the patients we're fighting for. Our cancer treatment specialists share the same vision. Experts from all over the world working closely together to deliver truly personalized cancer care. And these are the specialists we're proud to call our own. Expert medicine works here. Learn more at cancercenter.com. Appointments available now. I'm Tony Waterman coming up on the breakdown this week. As Canada legalizes the use of recreational marijuana, where are the opportunities for Bermudian investors and the insurance sector? From chocolates to gummies to hair products, a look at how popular cannabinoid products have been in Bermuda and the most feathered out event in the Bermuda calendar. But the man behind the event says it's not all fun and games. That's Thursday at 8 p.m. on ZBM TV9. And turning to sports, a young swimmer breaks records in a Canadian swim meet. An international junior tennis tournament is underway, and the draw for the FA Challenge Cup first round is made. Earl Bazin has the details of these stories and so much more in tonight's sports report.
The record books were rewritten three times over as Elon Daly competed at the Hall of Fame swim meet in Canada. Daly competed in four events in the girls' 13-year-old age group and stood on top of the podium each time. She would also break three Bermuda records, including a record that has stood for more than 19 years. During the 100-meter freestyle final, Daly finished first touching the wall in a time of 57.11. Daly's time would be faster than the record time in the age group held by Madeline Moore set back on March 21st, 2015. Daly also won the 100-meter backstroke final, stopping the clock in a time of 104.91, which breaks Emma Harvey's time set back on February 6, 2016. A time of 34.26 during the 50-meter breaststroke final would see Daly break a 19-year-old record held by Ashley Aiken, which was set back on June 1, 1999. Daly would win the 50-meter butterfly final, touching the wall in a time of 28.91. The Bermuda ITF Junior Open Tennis Tournament got underway at the WER Joe Tennis Stadium with three Bermuda players taking to the court in the boys' singles 18 main draw. Trey Mallory would advance following a straight set victory over Daniel Angus from Trinidad and Tobago 6262. Tariq Simons would also advance, needing three sets to do so, defeating Renzu Gu from China 643662. Unfortunately, Lorenzo Durant Lucarni would fall in straight set 616 love to Zach Cara from Canada. Bermuda's lone competitor in the ladies' draw, Shelby Madeiras, would go down a straight set, six love, six love, to Olivia Linzer from the USA. The Bermuda Football Association hosted the FA Challenge Cup first round draw at the Clyde Best Center of Excellence Boardroom. Matches will be played on Saturday, January 19th, and Sunday, January 20th. The first round draw features some interesting matchups with the Boulevard Blazers drawing against BAA, while an old first division affair will see St. David's host the Southampton Rangers. The defending champions, Robin Hood, will travel to Whitehill Field to face off against the Somerset Eagles. Hamilton Parish will entertain the Somerset Trojans at the Wellington Oval. With St. George's Colts facing the Devonshire Cougars. The PHC Zebras are at home against the North Edge Rams, while the Dandy Town Hornets will face a tricky one against the Paget Lions. Nathan Trott and his England under-20 teammates had to settle for a 1-1 draw following a late equalizer from the Czech Republic. Elizabeth Parsons and her Wagner College women's golf teammates closed out the full season by playing in the annual Brown Bear Invitational at the Par 72, 6,123 yard Ledgemont Country Club. Wagner placed ninth overall with a 36 hole score of 51 over par, 627. Parsons finished tied 58 at 22 over par after two rounds of 9 over par 81 and 13 over par 85. Parsons' two rounds saw her card 20 pars, 12 both boogies, two double boogies, and two triple boogies. Braxton Stowe and his St. Louis University men's baseball teammates took on the University of Missouri in three six-inning games. Stowe and St. Louis would win the first match 4-0, but the University of Missouri would level the series at 1-1 when they won game 2 3-0. The series would come down to a third and final game with the University of Missouri winning 5-0 to claim the series 2-1. Kayla Carrick represented Bermuda at the Nordic Junior Squash Open in Sweden. Carrick took on Andre Ingelbrink from Germany in his first round match, going down in a five-set battle. Carrick would win the first game 11-6, but Ingelbrink would level the match at 1-1, winning the second game 11-8. Ingelbrink would then take a 2-1 lead when he won the third game 11-7, but Carrick would level the match at 2-2 when he won the fourth game 11-3. The fifth and final game will be a seesaw battle with Ingelbrink winning 13-11. The Bermuda Basketball Association's Elite City League season resumed at the Bermuda College Gymnasium with a doubleheader that produced 254 points last night. Game one saw the Hornets defeat the Panthers 72-63. Dre Smith led the Hornets to victory with a game-high 33 points, while Dean Jones scored 19 points for the Panthers. The Falcons would win game two 62-57 over the Warriors. Ryan Rabain would lead the Falcons to victory with a game-high 20 points, while the Warriors would get 17 points from Cameron James. A penalty try separated Brindley Toms and his Bedwat teammates and Cardiff FC after a low-scoring encounter in front of the BBC TV cameras. Cardiff would edge out a 16-14 win over Bedwat. 
Week 3 of the Gold Point Archery Outdoor League saw action continue at Southside. The competitors shooting at a target size of 40 centimeters at a distance of 18 meters. Bernard Wade had the top score for the week, recording 528 points. Robert O'Connor was second with a score of 516 points. And Jaden Roberts was third with a score of 504 points. Week 6 of the Friesenburg Meyer Continental Bowling League season would see league leaders, the Oddballs, defeat the underdogs 26-4. Bermuda Pass Control defeated New Hope 17-13, while the Cubs got by the Cricket Licky Lundry 27-3. The Invaders defeated the Pinjammers 18-12, and the Nifty Rulers edged the Spice Knicks 16-14. I'm Earl Basden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. Thanks, Earl. Well, that's all for the news team. For the moment, I'm Diane Brewer. Thanks for sharing your Tuesday evening with us, everyone. Good night. I'm Tony Waterman. Coming up on The Breakdown this week, as Canada legalizes the use of recreational marijuana, where are the opportunities for Bermudian investors and the insurance sector? From chocolates to gummies to hair products, a look at how popular cannabinoid products have been in Bermuda and the most feathered out event in the Bermuda calendar. But the man behind the event says it's not all fun and games. That's Thursday at 8.30.